Well, I'm glad you've asked that, and I'm glad I've got a chance to explain really what Christians believe, because it's not that hard. It'll just take a few minutes. Uh, it's essentially six points. The Christian gospel can be summarized in six simple points, and I might just do a few diagrams to represent those points, if that's okay, just as we're going along. It helps me to remember what to say, and, and it helps you also, I think, perhaps to visualize what's going on. The first basic point of the Christian message is that God is in charge of the world, that he's the ruler of the world, uh, that he made the world, and that really his rule of the world is connected to the fact that he made the world. Uh, because he created everything, because he fashioned and formed and, and made every single thing, he's in charge of every single thing. He's the ruler, he's the boss. And not only of just the world in general, but of us, of humanity. He made us as well. And so he is in charge of us and has a claim on us as our maker. Uh, and he gave us a special position within the creation, which is a very interesting thing that the Bible says, that mankind was created not on the same level as the rest of the creation, but actually to be in charge of the creation as sort of like God's agent or his vice regent, uh, to look after and care for and have responsibility for the rest of the world, the rest of the creation, but underneath God's authority. So we have God in charge and mankind in charge of the created world under his authority. And there's a part of the Bible that expresses that really well in the book of Revelation, um, in chapter 4 and verse 11, which says that God is worthy of receiving honour and glory and thanks and power because he created everything, all things, and they all came into existence according to his will. But that's, that picture is clearly not how the world is at the moment. Uh, you don't see this ideal picture of God in charge and mankind doing what he says and so on and so forth. The world is very different now, and that's really because we've all rejected and rebelled against God. Uh, we don't want him to be in charge. I certainly don't, and I don't think you do either. We don't want someone telling us what to do, some God in heaven instructing us and dictating what life should be like, and so we rebel. We say, no thanks, we would, I'd much rather live life my own way, thanks very much. And that's the experience of humans everywhere, all of us. We all reject God and we all try to be the captains of our own little souls, the captains of our own ships. Uh, it's what in the Bible is known by the term sin. You might have heard that word. It's not really about sort of rules or being naughty. It's about rebelling against God, about rejecting him. The trouble is that as we do that, uh, the consequences for our relationships and for the world are not good because by rejecting God in his ways, we reject the right way to run the world and be involved in the world and participate in the world. And so things are just a mess. We can't manage our relationships, we can't manage the world, it's just, it falls apart. But there's a more serious consequence as well, and that is that God, because he is God, will not allow us to rebel and to reject him forever. And there is a consequence to us doing that, an eternal consequence. And that is that quite rightly and justly, and because he is loving, God takes wrongdoing and injustice and rebellion into account, and he judges it and he gives it the sentence it deserves. And that is that he separates himself from us. He excludes us from his own presence and he judges us. Uh, there are a number of places in the Bible that talk about that. I'll just jot one down there. In other words, we're gonna face punishment and judgment for rebelling against God. And that punishment is death. Which sounds fairly hard and fairly harsh even but in other respects is, is just right and proper and just that God should treat rebellion like that. But it's by no means the end of the story. And in fact, it's only half the story. The rest of the story and the great news that the New Testament just rings with is that God did something about it. He didn't leave it there. He sent his son into the world, uh, the man Jesus, Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus was different. He was different from us. He didn't rebel. He didn't reject God. He didn't do things his own way. He actually lived God's way. He always lived under God's rule. And so he didn't deserve to die. He didn't deserve punishment. But he did die. He was punished. And this is the extraordinary thing about the cross and about the Christian message, is that Jesus died on the cross, not for his own sin, not for his own rebellion, but for ours. He died in our place as a substitute. He took the judgment that we deserved on himself. And of the many, many places in the Bible that this is talked about, I'll just jot down 1 Peter 3.18, which talks about how Christ died once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. But that's not all, of course. 
he rose from the dead. God raised him from the dead to be the ruler of the world, to be the one now in charge of the world, and indeed as humanity was always meant to be. So Jesus, he killed death, he conquered death, he rose from the grave. And because he's now the ruler of the world, he gives a completely new life and new start to people who trust in him and who can be forgiven through him. And uh, I'll just write down a Bible verse here and also in the book of 1 Peter that you can look up about that. Well, all this really brings us to a point of decision, I guess, or to a parting of the ways that there really are only two options open from this point on. Um, that is that we can continue to rebel against and reject God, to, to write, try and run life our own way and to uh, generally be autonomous. But the consequence of that is drastic and it's terrible. It basically is that we're going to be judged by God and we're going to face condemnation and death and judgment. It ain't good. Uh, the alternative is to give up the rebellion, to stop fighting and to come back to God and submit to Jesus, to live his way rather than ours, and so to be forgiven by God through Jesus' death and to be given a new life, a life that will stretch on past death, that will stretch on to eternity. Uh, there's a great verse in the Bible in John, which I love, which says, and I'll just write it down here, the, the reference, uh, everyone who believes in the Son, who trusts in the Son, has eternal life life forever. But the person who rejects the Son, who continues to rebel against God, well, they won't see life because God's anger, his judgment remains on them. And this, I guess, leaves us with a choice, leaves me with a question to ask you, and that is which of these two ways is the way you want to live? 